<gasps> Whenever you get a problem, you should ask Ma. Hey, welcome to our scene on asthma, represented by these kids over here who are asking Ma about their problems, asking Ma for asthma. So asthma is a condition in which the lung airways narrow and swell, causing difficulty in breathing. And in this video, we're going to talk about the pathophysiology of asthma, the symptoms, and at the end, we'll have a word on treatment. Before we get to what's going on with these kids over here, let's look outside because that's where they came from and got their symptoms. So this scene over here is going to help us remember the triggers of asthma, represented by the dog over here trying to pull the trigger. And this works out really well, because he's trying to pull the trigger on this gun over here that's very sensitive. We'll call it hypersensitive, a hypersensitive gun. This is going to remind us of hypersensitivity type 1. It is a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction which causes the symptoms in asthma. Triggers include things like car exhaust, represented by the car exhaust over here, pets, including dogs, pet dander, dust, and even medications, such as aspirin and beta blockers. These have also been known to trigger symptoms in some individuals with asthma. Okay, so we're aware of some of the triggers in asthma, as well as the fact that the symptoms are caused by a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. Now let's talk about the symptoms. Before we talk about these kids over here, let's look at the sign in the back of the room, because conveniently, it shows us a little bit about asthma. This is fantastic, a sign about asthma right in the back of this room over here. So here we have the normal lung on this side. The muscles relaxed with a normal lining and a normal amount of mucus over here. And over here we have the asthmatic lung, and we see the very m tight muscles in the airways along with extra mucus over here. This makes it very difficult for asthmatics to breathe. Now I want to note two things. We th see this reverse arrow over here just popping out of the wall. This is to help us remember that unlike other obstructive lung diseases, a key component of asthmatics is the reversibility of its symptoms. However, it's important to note that chronic asthma can lead to smooth muscle hypertrophy, represented by this hypertrophy over here, and this leads to further bronchoconstriction. Okay, now let's talk about the kids. All right, let's take a look at each one of these kids over here, and they're going to remind us of other findings in asthma. Remember, this girl was coughing over here. <coughs> this is remind us of the coughing that's classically seen in asthmatic patients. And this girl was wheezing over here to remind us of the wheezing often on expiration. But this kid also was breathing rapidly <laughs> to remind us of that tachypnea and also had very difficult breathing. <sighs> dyspnea. Tachypnea and dyspnea are often symptoms in asthma. It is important to note, though, that the inspiratory over the expiratory ratio is going to be decreased often in asthmatic patients, and this is because expiration takes longer. So expiration is going to be longer than inspiration, thus making a decreased inspiratory over expiratory ratio. All right, this kid who woke up with an ox as a head, he's very confused about it. The ox as a head. The truth is, it's really a hippo ox. A hippo ox to remind us of hypoxemia. Hypoxemia is another finding in asthma. And this kid woke up as a question mark. We'll call it a paradox. The pulsus paradoxus. Pulsus paradoxus is another finding in asthma, in which there's an abnormally large decrease in stroke volume. And finally, this kid. This kid over here woke up as a bottle. We're not focusing on the bottle. We're focusing on the plug, the plug of the bottle. And this bottle holds mucus. So the plug on the mucus for mucus plugging. Mucus plugging is a major finding in asthma. This can be particularly dangerous because they not only block exchange of air, but they also block inhaled medications from getting to the site of inflammation. Now we note this mucus plug over here holding this cache over here, this cache, this spiral cache, or the cache spiral for Kirschman spirals. In the sputum, these Kirschman spirals are spiral-shaped mucus plugs, which are basically elongated mucus casts from small bronchi of people with bronchial asthma. And over here, he's being poked by a needle with charcoal on it. The charcoal is going to remind us of charcot-laden crystals, and the needle is going to remind us that they're needle-shaped. These charcot-laden crystals are formed by the breakdown of eosinophils. All right, we're going to end off this video by making a few points about diagnostic and treatment. So diagnosis of asthma is supported by spirometry and metacholine challenge. This is a medical test used to assist in diagnosing asthma in which a patient breathes in methacholine, which provokes airway obstruction, and asthmatic patients will react to lower dose. Now, when we discuss treatment of asthma, we have to also discuss the fact that there are different forms of asthma, from less severe to most severe. The types of asthma are intermittent asthma, mild persistent asthma, moderate persistent asthma, and finally severe persistent asthma. Treatments for each of these asthmas will, will be discussed in different videos. It's important to note, however, that there is no cure for asthma. 
there are simply treatments available can, that can manage the symptoms and prevent the development of an asthma attack. For example, inhalers, which contain bronchodilators, help open up the airways. That's obviously not a cure, but it helps relieve the symptoms. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video on asthma. Take care.